Well, hello again uh, from Living Word Church, and and uh, I've been excited about this uh, the series we've been talking about love in marriage, not love and a and d, but love in marriage. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and begin uh, part four on uh, Genesis chapter two, verse eighteen. Again, it says, "And the Lord God, and the Lord God said." It is not good that the man should be left alone. I will make him a helpmate meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And also Adam called every living creature that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help me for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called a woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now I got more into that, but let's continue where I left off uh, on this past service, uh, let, let's go into uh, remember some things, men, and I talk a lot to men, and a lot of times my wife and I were together in this thing, but, uh, and she'll share some uh, sides of the women, but, um, but I, I want to share some things with you uh, about when you first met. We talk about keep romance in your marriage. doesn't matter how long you've been married. 20, 30, 40, 50 years or whatever, it don't matter, but you need to keep romance in your marriage. Romance is love, adventure, and excitement. Remember when the first time you met each other. Now remember we, we met in 74. I won't go into that. Your heart racing at every thought of her or him. And, and, and so when you, when you meet your future wife-to-be, at that time you didn't know, but when you met your future wife or husband-to-be, you, the next day you went to work, you just constantly thought about somebody you met. Uh, I, I remember Charlotte told me that when we met on March the 30th, 1974, when we met, she said the, uh, the very next day she worked at uh, a Safeway grocery department store, Safeway store. And uh, she was a cash register. But of course, at that time, you didn't have these little, you know, you click it. You, you did all, you did everything yourself, counted everything yourself, and hand out money. You count it yourself, give it to them. And, but she said, uh, she said that very next day after she met me, she said she just was thinking about a lot about me. And I was thinking a lot about her too, because we just met, you know, first day you met each other, you, you're excited. And she said uh, that day she she made a, a mistake and, and a few mistakes and giving up money, whatever, to people. And the boss went up to her and said, what is wrong with you? You never make those kind of mistakes. Uh, what, 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 what's going on with you? And she said, well, I, I met this man. I met this man. <laughs> so, and uh, he said, well, you're going to have to get your thoughts back over here. And, and you had to get your thoughts back over here. And, uh, and then, of course, I saw my dad the next day. I, I, I met this girl. See, the, the first, your heart racing at every thought of her or him. And the sweetest, and, and talking about romance, the sweetest in your voice when, she, when you called or talked to her. I mean, uh, the extra things you would do to help each other. You remember these times? Uh, thinking of ways to please him or thinking of ways to please her. You're always trying to think of some ways to please her, thinking of her. I remember we always left each other notes, you know. We, um, uh, I, went, I was a machinist uh, when we met and, and uh, 
carry my lunch pail. We got married, I carry, had my lunch pail, and, and I always have a note in the uh, lunch, open it up, there it is, I love you, honey, or whatever, and I love you too. And, and so we, we learned some things in marriage, and I, I've learned a lot of things about her. She learned a, a lot of things about me. I learned some things about her, I, I think needs to be corrected, and, and she learned, then she learned some things about me, probably learned more things about me that need to be corrected because, you know, there's, there's a difference, you know. And uh, so, it, it's, like I said, it's a miracle when two people come together and, and, and marry. You know, uh, she, she worked and I worked, and, and uh, so when you married, you got to understand that uh, everything you have, you, you're together, you, you're together financially, you're together these things. And uh, so uh, she learned some things, and she learned now that when she get paycheck, she don't want to take off and do what she wants to with her, with her money. No, I had to talk. I said, no, honey, we, we, we're together. You know, we pay the rent, whatever, we, we, do, we, we do this together. So we, we learn, and marriage is also adjusting every parent. And uh, you, you're thinking of ways to, to please him or her. You know, uh, uh, you can't wait to, to see each other. You can't wait to see each other. And uh, uh, it, it's kind of funny, you know. And, and uh, you know, you, 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 I, I believe in keeping words and commitments. If I tell her something, I need to do it. And she tells me we need to do it. Well, one day uh, when I get home from work, I always get. I, I love to get home from work. And she knew back in those days, I don't eat a lot of fried chicken today. I mean, I, I love fried, fried chicken, but I don't eat a lot today fried foods. But I, I, I love fried chicken and and I, I love potatoes and gravy. And I'm getting hungry just talking about these things right now. Fried chicken, potatoes and gravy, and whatever is a whole works a meal. And she said, "Well, day, honey, I said I'm gonna have you a big meal fixed when you get home from work." I'm gonna have some fried chicken and, and some potatoes and gravy and green beans, corn on the cob. And I went to work, I'm thinking, I'm all day I'm thinking about, oh my goodness, when I get home, I'm gonna have that good old fried chicken, chicken show, cook a meal. I'm gonna have that fried chicken. Well, that little did I know, I, I came home from work, I walked in the door, there was no fried chicken, there's no potatoes and gravy, there's no corn on the cob, no green beans. I, I said, what happened? She said, well, honey, I got real busy today, so I, I made some uh, pinto beans. <laughs> I said, I, I, I had, I guess I had a little attitude there. I said, what do you mean you had pinned on beans? You know, you said, you told me you're going to fix me fried chicken, potatoes and gravy, corn on the cob, green beans. How come you do that? She said, honey, I got it. I said, don't you, <laughs> I said, don't you ever do that again. Don't you do that again. I mean, my, that kind of upset me because I, now I was on that fried chicken. I said, I like pinto beans, but that ain't what I wanted. And I told the people that, uh, that day, boy, when I get home, I'm gonna have fried chicken. I'm gonna have uh, ma mashed potatoes and gravy, green beans, corn on the cob. It's gonna be the worst. Oh, they said, oh man, you, you're blessed. I, I'm blessed, man, when I get home. And I didn't dare go back the next day and tell them I had <laughs> been told me. <laughs> but anyway, we just had a great time, but I've learned. But now she, she tells me she's gonna fix me something. You better fix it. Now, I do a lot better now, my attitude back then. Uh, uh, we're, we're, I'm better now. <laughs> I'm better now. And but but uh, you know you you learn you learn each other. Uh, that's what you love in marriage. You got, got to learn. There's some things you have you have to give in. Now, at that time, I didn't know how to give in. But now I understand. If something happens, uh, she doesn't. I, I understand that things come up. We'll do it tomorrow. Whatever. But, but you can't wait to see each other. You held hands when you were together. Now you still hold it. We still hold hands when we go walk in the mall. We hold hands together and all that stuff. And, and I still open the door. Once in a while I miss it, but I, I tell her, honey, wait till I get over there. <laughs> wait, let me get over there so I open the door for you. I said, I want to keep open the door for you. And I do because she's the queen. You should do that. And um, I see men all the time and I don't want to be that way. I don't want to be just, now sometimes they open the door. Once in a while, there might be times she opens the door. Well, we don't argue over that. But on the other hand, most of the time, I like to open the doors for her. Uh, you set each other, uh, you, you, you set, I'm talking about keeping romance in marriage. You, you set with each other all the time. Uh, uh, you spoke sweet words to each other. You, you, you speak sweet words to each other. Uh, the spark in your eyes when you first met, remember that? And, and, and you must, you must fan the flame. Let's face it. You don't look like you did when you first met. Amen. You don't look like you did when you first met. And the, the things change. Your body changes. 
Uh, your personality don't, but your body changes. Her body's changed, my body's changed. I'm a little older, but I still say I'm young, and uh, I still think I'm, uh, when we, I was 26 when we married, she was 18. I still think like I'm 26, and she's 18, because we're young at heart. And uh, so, um, about a godly marriage, remember just recently I told you that uh, the Lord used me in writing words of inspiration, and he gave this to me a while back. I went and copied and pasted it because I wrote this a while back. But I want to read this to you. This is called Having a Godly Marriage. I believe you'll like this. Love is not just words. It must be followed up with corresponding actions. For love to grow, it must be practiced on both sides through mutual understanding and reactions. When love becomes weak, it is because a husband and a wife has taken each other, other for granted. When love had little reaction toward each other, then both are no longer being esteemed or enchanted. Love is always an action word in motion between a husband and a wife. To say I love you is not enough. It's when actions are joined in with love that will make a successful married life. For a marriage to remain strong, that will last for years, then love must be its priority and let it take the lead. If, a, both, if both husband and wife desires for the love to be strong, then this message must be received. A passionate love should always be in a marriage as it was when you first met. When it, when it is alive with words and actions, then there will have no future. You will have no future regrets. Love is not selfish by saying, what can you do for me today? It is when a husband and a wife are trying out to do each other, for that's the only way. For love to be strong in a marriage, both husband and wife must do their part. If marriage is not filled with love and action, then love can become weak and depart. If you want your marriage to be successful, then you, your love for her must be shown. Don't just speak words only, but let it be seen. Then your marriage will be strong. If you love your wife or if you love your husband, then you know what to do. Don't put your focus on each other. Just look in the mirror and just focus on you. Stir up the love that you have for one another and let it be shown. Your marriage will grow quickly, God's way, and it will be strong. Sometimes you can fall short when it comes to walking in love, but it becomes easier when you rely on the Holy Spirit who has given you love from above. Love is the only hope that will keep a marriage together to be exciting and alive. Without the love of words and actions to be seen, then your marriage will only survive. Now you know what to do, so just say, I love you. Be a doer of those words, and you'll see a change because of what you do. Now to the husband. You are the thermostat of your marriage, and it is up to you to set the example. Your wife should never be physically or mentally criticized and trampled. Sex is not what you do to show her that you love her, so don't make haste. Sometimes all she wants from you is sweet words and a time for her to be embraced. Sex is for marriage, relationship, joined together in love, so treat her with kindness and respect. Your sex life will be better if you show her that you love her when you don't neglect. Now to the wife. Love is a two-way street. He needs to hear your words of love followed up by actions. If you love him in that manner, then your love will draw out of him a pleasant reaction. Do not withhold sex from him regularly because it will make him feel rejected. Remember, sex and marriage is God's plan. 
It is not to be neglected. Love is gentle, kind, patient, long-suffering, and it will always give. Do not live in word only, but in deed also, for this is the way you shall live. To build your marriage God's way, then take heed to these instructions and do. And many others will notice a change in your marriage and will desire a marriage like the both of you. And so this is another words of inspiration that's talking to marriage. Marriage is not just spiritual. Marriage is not just all spiritual. There's a lot of natural things together. You can go out and, and, and purchase a brand new car, brand spanking new car, zero miles on it, and it's a new car. But even though it's a new car, to keep it new, to keep it new, running new, you got to maintain it, change the oil. you got to make sure it's, it, it's in good shape. Marriage is like that. When you get a husband or a wife, you have to maintain that relationship. You got to keep renewing the love and you keep romance in the marriage. You got to keep loving each other and being faithful to each other. That's what it's all about. See, God intends and expects marriages to be a lifetime commitment between a man and a woman based on the principle of biblical love. The relationship between Jesus Christ and his church is the supreme example of the commitment love that is a husband and a wife are to follow and their relationship with each other. It's a lifetime commitment. Love is to death do your part. Amen. A husband needs to spend time with his wife. Now, I know I talk a lot to the husbands, but I'm talking to the wives too because it, it, this applies. What applies to the husband a lot of time, it applies to the wife too. You know, a man wanted to prove... Uh, uh, a man wanted to prove uh, his love for his wife, so he swam the deepest river. He crossed the widest desert and climbed the highest mountain. She divorced him because he was never at home. <laughs> so uh, you say, well, I got to go make money for you. I got to make all the kind of money because I love you, but she needs you home, baby. She needs you home, and you need to be together. My, my wife and I, Charlotte, we do things together all the time. We're always together all the time. See, the responsibilities of a husband. You say, why are you talking a lot about husbands? What about the wives? Well, Charlotte, will, she'll talk to you later. But like I said, the husband is the thermostat of his marriage. If the husband doesn't love his wife the way God told him to love his wife, his days on earth can be short, not because she's going to kill him, because he opened the door to the devil. You've got to cherish your wife. You've got to cherish your mate. But on the other hand, you've got to cherish each other. You've got to cherish each other. The responsibilities of a husband, let me say this. This is to the husbands now. He has a foundation of being in a local church. Every husband has the responsibility to make sure his wife and family attends to church faithfully. Not the internet, but the church. The internet's not the church. If you can't be in a local church, then watch through internet. But if you can't be in the church, be in the local church. Now, I'll continue doing the internet services because some people need to, to hear what I'm, I'm preaching on. But his foundation is going to church. Number two, a husband, he is sound in faith. Number three, he is holy in life. These are the things that will be an ideal husband. He's the head of the home. He's in church with his family, wife and family. He is sound in faith. He is holy in life. I know we have a member in our church, and, and they still here. He's been 20, I guess they've been here with us about 23 years. Uh, I call him Colonel Joe and Maria. 
I'll talk about them today. You, some of you know. Well, when Maria first came to the church, she came by herself. She was coming by herself with her little baby, uh, Paulina. I think Paulina was about two or three years old at that time. I, I believe she came to church. She wanted her husband to come, but he stayed home. And, and he was a football guy. He watched football all the time, football. But I just told Maria, I said, Maria, I said, just would you be praying for him? Don't harp on it. Just, just, we'll just pray, be praying for him. We'll be praying for Joe. We'll be praying for him. Don't know who he is, but after about a year and a half or maybe two years, finally he, he came to church. And guess what? One man said, if you, if you get close to a slippery bank, you fall right on in. Well, he came. He loved it. Fell right on in. He's been with us now. They're still with us. Been with us about 20, I guess 23 years or whatever. Uh, uh, call him Colonel Joe because he's a full, he was a full-pledged full colonel. I went to his graduation uh, a colonel, but now he's the head usher, just doing a great job. Him and his wife and a daughter now, she's, uh, she's close to 28 now. And, uh, but see, what God can do, you can't harp on each other about going to church. Now, it, it, it's been God's will that he would set the stage of being involved in the church. But if the husband don't go to church, ladies, you go to church. And believe God, be that example, believe God that he'll come in. But thank God, it was God's best that they both come together. But hey, you don't harp on it. You just believe God. So things got better. Now he's doing great. And the others have been here for many years. We thank God for that. Uh, um, a husband's affections are on, on, uh, affections are on things above. He lives unspotted from the world. He's establishing God's word. He loves his wife. How does he love his wife? How does a, a husband love his wife? Well, it's important. Number A, esteems her highly. B, goes to church with her. C, he still he dates her. D, helps out with the house chores. E, help out with the children. F, wash and clean her car. Go shopping with her. Be pleasing to her. These are the things that can work on both sides. You just kind of see, uh, do things with your mate. Do things with your spouse. Do things with her. Now, let, let, let's talk about a good wife now. What the Bible says now, now let me talk to the wives now. now the, what the Bible says, a lot of you know these verses. He, th this man is a blessed man because he's got a wife that's found in Proverbs 31.10, the Living Bible says. If you can find a truly good wife, she is worth more than precious gems. Her husband can trust her. She will richly satisfy his needs. She will not hinder him, but help him all her life. And verse 25, she is a woman of strength and dignity and has no fear of old age. When she speaks, her words are wise and kindness is the rule for everything she says. She watches carefully all that goes on throughout her household and is never lazy. Her children stand and bless her, so does her husband. She, he praises her with these words. There are many fine women in the world, but you are the best of them all. Charm can be deceptive, and beauty doesn't last, but a woman who fears and reverences God shall be greatly praised. Praise her for the many fine things she does to be the wives. Things she does. The wise things she does. Amen. So be thankful that, husband, you have a wife that serves God. Be thankful that you do have a wife as such. Bless her by, going, by being faithful to her involved in ministry. There is, a, let me give you six tips for being a godly husband. After all, it's the wife's desire to have a husband that will do these things. 
I remember when, uh, when our son, Edward, about 10 years ago, he married uh, Chad uh, from the Philippines. And uh, they, didn't, they met online, and uh, they began to Skype online for a year. And they fell in love. They fell in love. But she had lit, she's never been on the internet, she's been on the line as far as looking for her husband. She's believing God for her husband. And she had a list of things of what she's believing God for in a man. And one of those things, she said, I was believing God for a man that will love God more than me. That will love God, love me, but love God more. And she said, when she, when she met Edward, she said, she's found a man that loved God more than her. See, a wife wants a man, a husband that will love God more than her. Because if he loves God, he will take her to church and do all these things. So, uh, number one, these tips, he's a spiritual leader of the home. Number two, he leads with humility. Number three, he is a godly, courageous man. He is bold in the things of God. Number four, he is a provider. He's not lazy. Number five, he loves God more than he loves his wife. That's one of those things she had down. And number six, he loves her biblically. There's three things that a husband needs. There's three things that this husband needs. He needs a strong local church. Number two, he needs a strong family. Number three, he needs a strong life. And a strong life, a strong family, a strong wife, a strong church will cause him to succeed in life. When you see a, a, a man that's successful in ministry, what makes a man successful in ministry is not only God, but a wife. Without a good wife, a man could not be, do his best in ministry. Because me having a strong wife, a spiritual wife that's with me, is a wife is a backbone to her husband. Wives, I want to encourage you, be the backbone to him. Don't condemn him. Don't criticize him. Don't harp on him. Don't tell him what he needs to do. Live that example. Show him that you want to go to church. If he don't go to church, bless God, you get up and get, you go to church. You go to church. My, my, my wife, Charlotte, uh, her mom, her name was Stella. She's in heaven now. She raised five children. Her dad, didn't, uh, Charlotte's dad, didn't go to church. But she went to church and took all six kids with her. And old Charlotte said, oh, let them stay home today. Let them stay home with me. She said, no, Charlie, they're not staying home. They're going to church. You stay home, but we're going to church. And thank God she took those kids to church. Well, Charlie finally later on got saved. But she took those kids to church. I thank God she did. Because if she hadn't took them to church and raised them up the way they should have raised up, would we be, would me and Charlotte be married today? If I hadn't married her and God brought us together, where would I be today? Would I be in ministry? It's so important to marry the right one. When you know you marry the right one, cherish that. Mentor that. Love, love your spouse, protect it at all cost. Because you have a marriage, you have a marriage, stick with it. Don't be involved in the world. Don't be lovers of pleasures more than love of God. Don't lose your desire for the church. Don't lose your desire for the things of God. Because what you feed will grow and what you starve will die. The more you feed the pleasures of the world, the more you feed the things of your flesh, the less you'll have a desire for follow God. Don't lose your desire to be on fire for God because you cannot get on fire for God pulling away from the things of God. Let me say that again. You cannot be on fire for God, keep your fire for God for pulling away from the things of God. 
Keep God number one in your marriage. Let me tell you what. There's so much more I could say, but time will not permit. But I want, I want to share with you again to thank you for these next four. I, I, I believe very soon we'll get into some more of these because there's so much I want to talk about and, uh, and about marriage. There's so much that I didn't say, but I've said a lot in the past four messages. I want to encourage you, keep God number one in your marriage. Keep God number one. Husband, keep God number one in your marriage. Keep the church number one. Keep, keep your family number one. Keep everything number one in your marriage. Keep it number one. Keep God number one. Keep the church number one. Keep your wife number one. Put them all on the same level and serve God together. Remember, thank you for your support. Uh, go to livingwordchurch.faith. You can give that way. Thank you for you that's putting on easy times. But praise God, we love you. I want to remind you that you are the head, not the tail, above and not beneath, and cannot be defeated. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Whom he leads, he feeds. Whom he guides, he provides. He's given his angels charge over you to keep you on your ways. You are blessed. You are blessed going someplace to manifest. And Jesus is Lord. Love you. God bless you. Thank you for watching Living Word Church online and being part of our eFam. If you joined us on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. And if you joined us on Facebook, please like the page so you don't miss any future events or services. There are a couple ways you can support this awesome ministry. One, by sharing this video with friends and family and getting the word out. Two, by making a financial donation by clicking the Give Now button. This will help us to continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. Thank you again for watching. God bless.